Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Charles Sterling. Uh, chatting with me for the last couple of minutes is Marco Russo calling in from, I didn't even ask him. I'm assuming he's calling from Italy. I should have asked him about it. Yes, but, Italy. Yeah, but he is such a world drop, a visitor that who knows where he's actually from. Um, as people have been on these calls before, me and Marco can talk with each other, but you guys can't actually um, hear us or, or talk to us. So what I'm going to need you guys to do is chat in the chat window and let me know if you have any questions. And Marco is going to go ahead and get started, and she's going to tell me when is a good time to actually start breaking for those questions. Um, hopefully. Oh, yes. oh, go ahead, Marco. What were you going to say? No, just, uh, just uh, for the question, we didn't uh, make an agreement. But um, I would prefer. I mean, I mean, if there are a, a related question, we can. We, you can stop him at any moment. Uh, but uh, I will try to keep uh, ten, fifteen minutes at the end uh, for all the Q and A. Uh, but uh, in, in case there is a very, very specific question, you can you can stop me. But otherwise, we can have time at the end. Perfect. And you're going to be out for the Data Insight Summit. And uh, this is to kick off a new training that you guys have got going on. Um, how long has this training been going on? Tell us a little bit about it. Tell us about your, your journey out here. And if I can get you to, in case anybody doesn't know who Marco Rosa is, tell us about yourself. And I'm going to hand the microphone to you, my friend, and mute myself. OK, thank you very, very much, Charles. Um, my name is Marco Russo, and uh, today we will see uh, this uh, presentation about uh, how to uh, improve your dashboard in Power BI. Uh, I, I wrote a blog post today in my blog to explain uh, how we created this uh, training. And actually, uh, this time, I, uh, this is a training I didn't create, actually. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the, the speaker. I, I present this content, but the, the, the entire content has been designed uh, and uh, created by Daniele Perilli, who is the, the guy who works with us uh, and uh, you know, take care of uh, many things about our website and uh, the custom visual that many of you may have already used. And uh, the idea was to provide uh, a set of best practices that anyone can apply to um, his own dashboard. Um, I have a certain experience with Power BI, especially for the data modeling, for the DAX language, uh, and I also have uh, a very, very long experience with uh, the BI world. Uh, but the design a dashboard is a skill that, uh, from a certain point of view, requires uh, some skill about uh, design. But what we try to do is to provide uh, the suggestion that can uh, enable anyone to improve their uh, dashboard, uh, at least avoiding the most uh, uh, common mistakes uh, and uh, of course trying to produce something that is also beautiful and not the, uh, not only useful so um, first of all we have to define what 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 is a dashboard and by dashboard because many of you know power bi uh, we don't uh, um, we're not we're not uh, referring to the dashboard of power bi the one that you have in the power bi service uh, that is a, a set of tiles that you can grab from different reports. We are referencing to the uh, more uh, generic definition of a dashboard, uh, which uh, uh, this is the, on the slide you can see the Stephen Few uh, definition, which is a very good one in our opinion. Uh, what uh, a dashboard is a visual display of the most important information needed to achieve one of more objectives. Uh, consolidated and arranged in a single screen so that the information can be monitored at a glance. So if you see, there are a few concepts here that uh, make a very big difference between a dashboard and a report. A uh, single screen, uh, monitor at a glance, uh, and uh, goal, uh, and the target is the user, the business user. So the idea is that the dashboard is something that uh, you use uh, relatively often to get a very, very quick analysis of the data. And then you can go deeper with other tools, with more reports, uh, with other, other dashboards, uh, maybe more detailed. But uh, this uh, definition helps us in uh, understanding what uh, we, we have to try to do with the dashboard. We have to try to obtain with the dashboard. And uh, you can imagine, when we say single screen, what do you think? No scroll bar. No, we, we don't have to, you know, go up and down. Then, of course, if you have a, a Windows phone, I mean, if you have a mobile phone, 
then you need probably to scroll something because otherwise it would be too small. But when you see this in a, in a desktop screen, it should be a single, a single screen. So these are the genetic, this is the, the, the genetic definition that, uh, that we, can, uh, uh, we can use. And uh, the problem is that you probably have seen many, many dashboards. And uh, what, uh, what, um, what are the things that makes a, a good dashboard and uh, the, the mistakes that uh, creates a, a bad one? Let's start to get a dashboard that uh, clearly has a, a number of issues. I mean, this dashboard is in a single screen. The material that you see is material that we found in the internet. So it's public, uh, these are public dashboards that we found. And uh, what, what is the, 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 the issue that you see here? Well, first of all, we are not using the, the space, the available space, uh, in a very useful way. At the end of the day, we want to see numbers, and the numbers here are very small. Uh, sometimes are confusing. Sometimes uh, you see um, a lot of colors that don't convey any particular information, and the choice of the color could be not particularly uh, useful. And uh, in general, this is a, a set of, uh, of uh, also KPI. For example, the, the gauge that you see on the top, uh, on the top uh, left, uh, just to display a single number, it uses uh, a very, very big area of the screen. So one uh, side effect of this is that the, the number of information that you can provide in this dashboard is very, very small. At the end of the day, you see that, that there are just uh, four indicators. Um, and uh, another table that has a lot of numbers in a very, very small area of the screen. So actually, this is not very readable. I think that also you are not able to read the content. I, I, yes, in my big screen, in a very high resolution, you can read the text of the, of the table, but actually, it is not very easy to use. So, I mean, okay, this is easy. There are a lot of effects that there are, it, it's, it does it doesn't look so nice okay so let's start to see another dashboard that at first sight uh, we may say oh this is a nice dashboard right so let's take a look as you see this is a dashboard with some simple data that uh, in reality it breaks uh, a number of rules i will show you later that uh, we defined 15 rules that uh, we can apply to um, any dashboard in order to improve the dashboard and to get uh, um, a good looking one and a useful one. And uh, this dashboard that you see violates uh, uh, six, eight of these uh, rules, of these 15 rules. And we can see uh, one by one these rules that uh, are violated. For example, uh, the first one is that uh, we need to keep uh, everything at a glance. I will describe these rules uh, in a minute, but uh, for example, this, uh, this uh, a dashboard, uh, does not fit in a single screen. And as you see, we have a scroll bar and the scroll bar should not be uh, used in a dashboard because it should be displayed in a single screen without having to scroll. Uh, we have to keep it simple, uh, which means that we don't have to add in the, in the, in the report uh, unnecess unnecessary um, lines, border, or uh, uh, you know, any uh, decoration that is not really useful. Moreover, this dashboard is using a black background, which is another bad idea, and I will explain this uh, later. Uh, we have to keep elements aligned, uh, and uh, you see, this is uh, just, uh, if, you, if you want, it's uh, just a you know, aesthetic problem, but uh, a dashboard that doesn't look good uh, doesn't convey a good message. So uh, we should align everything in a good way. Um, then uh, there is another problem, that uh, if you look at the, symbols used here, uh, there are a number of uh, names and, and symbols that uh, do not, uh, are not self-explanatory, and there is no legend explaining what is the meaning of uh, the symbols that you see. Uh, sometimes the dashboard has to be shown to a business user that don't know exactly uh, the acronyms used in the business. Uh, for example, imagine when a dashboard is used uh, in a, in a meeting with, uh, with a stakeholder uh, or shareholder, and, and uh, they, maybe they, they don't know all the details of the business. So having some explanation of what you are looking at is, is important. 
uh, we have to start from zero, and this is another rule that is violated by the, at least a couple of gauges that we have here. Uh, mm -hmm. The violation of this uh, rule makes a few metrics to appear similar, whereas the real uh, position is a bit very different if you have another metric. So actually, we have gauges that are uh, next to each other, but actually you cannot compare them. You cannot use them side by side. Uh, we have to uh, reduce some time the number. We have to shorten the number because a, a certain level of detail of a certain metric is not very useful. Actually, looking at the, all the digits, uh, looking at the decimal points, sometimes is not useful. Sometimes I want to see 1 million, 2 million, 100K is enough to understand the, 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 um, the size of a metric that we want to display. We have to choose the right color. Uh, this is a very, very underestimated problem. But actually, when you choose color, you have to think about the fact that not all the people see the color in the same way. Uh, there are a, a certain number of people, and actually 5 to 10% of the population may have some different uh, uh, way to, to, to is, I mean, is affected by color blindness, but sometimes it's just a different way they recognize color. And so if you use the color to convey an information, you have to make sure that they are able to recognize the color. And for example, in this line, you see that people affected by frytanopia, uh, they see this uh, instead of, I go back one slide, instead of this. So in this slide, we are using the green color in the, in the gauge, but this color is actually looks very similar to the color used in the, um, in, in the bar chart that you see at the bottom. So uh, this is another thing that uh, you have to be careful about. And finally, pick the right chart. Probably everybody knows that. Everybody knows that, that you have to make a choice between all the available visuals that you have in Power BI or in any other tool, and uh, you have to, to make a right choice. And actually, all the highlighted charts probably are not the right choice. For example, the bar chart is not the correct choice when you want to show um, something that is a trend over time. Uh, a line chart or a spark line that is a different kind of line chart would be the best choice in this case, whereas the gauge uh, is usually not a good choice because uh, it requires a lot of space uh, and uh, we may have uh, had a better visualization by using a bullet chart, for example, because the bullet chart would have provided, would have provided exactly the same information in a much more condensed space and in a more clear way, especially if you want to compare them together. So this is just uh, a list of the things that we can fix in this, uh, in this dashboard. So let me uh, let me introduce, uh, let me go to the next slide, sorry. Let me introduce you the 15 rules uh, that we should follow to design a, a good dashboard. So, okay, a perfect dashboard, <laughs> but uh, we try to, to, let's say that good enough would be a good start. So these are the 15 rules that we uh, coded uh, in uh, um, the train, in the course that we created. So what I'm showing you today is um, an overview of all of these rules, uh, and I would spend time on one of those, just to explain you what is the process that is behind each of these uh, rules. So the rules are um, relatively simple. One by one, uh, these are very, very simple steps that you can follow. The first rule is that you have to design for a target, which means that you need uh, to define the goal of the dashboard. What is the, the target of your dashboard? The second is that you have to keep everything at a glance, which means that, for example, you don't have uh, to scroll uh, up and down to see all the data that you have in your dashboard. The third is that uh, keep it simple. This is the rule that we will spend more time later to analyze in more detail, but in a few words, uh, it means uh, less decoration, uh, um, avoid uh, a picture background or a black background because they, these uh, elements don't add any value to your information, to your dashboard, and actually could be a distraction. The fourth is align elements. And uh, I mean, this is easy to realize. If you see uh, charts and text that are in a good order, it is better. The fifth is that uh, uh, be consistent. So um, don't choose different colors and charts just because uh, you want to use all of them. 
That's not a good reason. If you have uh, the same chart type across the dashboard, if that the type, if that chart type is the right one, the dashboard will not look boring. It will look professional. So don't confuse the, the fact that you, just because you have a tool, you don't have to use that tool. You need a reason to use it. The sixth is uh, highlight the most relevant information, uh, which means that uh, not all the numbers are the same. In a dashboard, there is always some data that is more important than something else. So it serves a larger area of the screen, a larger font. The position matters. There are parts in the dashboard that are more important than others because uh, we as humans are used to take to, to, to put more importance to an information that is put in a certain area of the screen or of a report. And uh, the seventh is be clear, which means that, that we have to explain what we are showing. And sometimes using an acronym can be complex if the user doesn't know what could be the, 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 the meaning. So having a legend sometimes is really necessary. The eight is a start from zero, which means that certain charts, but not all, not all of all the charts, uh, just certain charts requires you to start from the zero. So the axis has to start from zero. Others don't have this need. So we, would, we can see when and why to use this rule. The ninth is shorter than numbers. As I said, we may have to uh, reduce the length of the number of digits that we include in each metric that we display as number and not just as a chart. Because sometimes having one million is better than writing one followed by six zeros. Sometimes it is, it is just good enough having this kind of, uh, of visualization. The tenth is uh, show the context. Data should be compared with something else sometime. You put a number, that's fine, but uh, you usually want to compare this number with a previous year, with a budget. So the context is uh, how I can compare this number. Sometimes this is uh, in form of a chart. Sometimes this is in form of another number that you may display close to the other, maybe smaller, maybe with a different color, if this makes sense and is consistent with your, with your uh, dashboard. The 11th, choose the right color. We already, I already mentioned this before. Uh, there are people who don't see the same colors, uh, don't see colors in the same way as you do. So you may have to figure out whether what you're doing can be understood by anyone that will see your dashboard. The 12th is, and this is a very, very common mistake I have to say, design dashboards, not report. I mean, there is nothing wrong using Power BI to create a report. But actually, Power BI is a tool that has been designed to create dashboards. And to create what we call report in Power BI is actually a dashboard. Uh, when we talk, the general term report is uh, something like a paginated report uh, that you create in reporting services, a long list of names uh, and values and so on. In a dashboard, we don't want to show all of the customers. Usually we show the top five, the top 10. We show something that is visible in a single screen. Then sometimes, sometime, but as an exception, we may show a longer list with a scroll bar because we are not able to show all of them. But this should be the exception, not the rule. Having only listed that have a scroll bar and you, you, you fill the, the, the screen of, of this long list, uh, you are not creating a good dashboard. You are, you are creating something that is, is not providing a very, very quick and easy to understand information. The, 13, uh, the 13th the role, rule is the show variations. And if a difference is important, choose the right way to display it. And uh, sometime, uh, the, if you want to highlight how the, the, the data variated over time, you have to figure out a different way and also a different way to measure this difference and to display this difference rather than just uh, showing two numbers in a way. We, there are many, many different ways and different results, depending on what you want to highlight. The 14 is uh, leave the noise off, which means that uh, you should not suggest relationships that don't exist. It's uh, very important. Sometimes just uh, putting two numbers, two charts, close each other, may suggest that there is a relationship between uh, uh, unrelated uh, metrics. If you know that these metrics are not related together, 
just having a, a, some separation, some space in the middle could be important to define an, a separation in different parts of the same dashboard. And the 15 rule is, of course, the simplest to explain, uh, uh, choose the right, uh, uh, pick the right chart. So use the right uh, tool, uh, the right uh, visualization to display what you want to provide to the user. So at this point, let's take a look at, uh, okay, Marco, what can I do when I follow these rules? And I will show you in the next slide uh, what is the before and after of this. And the before is uh, on the left uh, side of the screen. Uh, we have a dashboard that actually is not so bad, but in reality, does not, uh, does a, it has a number of uh, issues. Actually, it violates uh, 15 rules, the dashboard on the left. And the dashboard on the right provides the same information in a more professional and clear way. And what you should think about is, what is the dashboard that I would like, I would like to see every day? Is the one on the left or is the one on the right? Because I know that many of you think, uh, but in a, in a meeting the first time, the one on the left, uh, you know, more impressive, just because you have a picture. But actually, when you have to see this data all the day and you have to navigate, uh, you know, there is a difference. And I want to show you this by, oh, there is a, an issue with the screen, no? Yeah, oh, Marco, if we could get you to reshare yep. your screen, I think that might help. We just lost it about a minute okay. ago. So it hasn't been gone okay. very long. Um, okay. And Karthik, welcome, try. welcome. I said that you just joined. You only missed about 21 minutes. Okay, so let me let me go, uh, wait a second. So I have to... How to do, 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 do. not really use it to hang out. So okay, okay. So share screen, screen share. It's it, I think it's coming through. And while you're sharing, okay, screen sharing. Um, happy okay. birthday to Michael. Michael's calling in from Israel and he's <laughs> joining us on his birthday. How cool is that? Okay. Um, okay. Is it not not yet? Is it working now? Nope. Not yet. I, I can see you talking. Yes, I know. I'm talking, but I, because I see in the, uh, actually. There we go. There we go. I see the screen. Okay. It's okay, working so now. The patients. Perfect. Okay. They're going to they're gonna see it in a couple seconds. So just wait, wait for it. I see yeah. it on the moderator screen. So. Okay. There it is. I and, and we're live again. Marco, go ahead. Thanks. Okay. Sorry for the, for the problem. So I was, uh, I was uh, uh, saying that, uh, the the two dashboard that uh, you see in the screen i uh, i hope that the resolution will improve uh in a few seconds on the left side you see the the dashboard that uh, violates the 15 rules and actually it it is not so bad i was saying but actually it could be improved and the one on the right is the uh, is the same dashboard the same content after the cure after we we improved the uh, the dashboard by applying all the rules that we have now, I will try a very dangerous operation, so I hope that this will work. I now opening the real dashboard because uh, this is uh, the Power BI file that contains the dashboard violating all the rules. And uh, if uh, this is visible, I hope that you will see that uh, once I enlarge everything, the problem is that this uh, dashboard requires a scroll bar to go up and down. And especially because you are probably seeing this uh, uh, in the, uh, you know, in, in the streaming, uh, probably the, the experience is not very good because when I scroll down, you have probably to wait some time before we actually scroll the screen. And by the way, this is a real dashboard. So we, we can actually click on a different uh, slicer and we are actually changing everything. So. The problem is that if I want to show everything, I end up doing this. So I end up in doing this, but this reduces uh, everything. So everything is smaller. I'm wasting probably almost half of my screen just for nothing. So this is not a good idea. Now, let me show you the same dashboard after the improvement. And uh, now this one, this one, here we go. So you see here, that uh, this is the same dashboard. Um, actually, it is not the same, it's the, the, the improved one. 
And uh, this dashboard actually has, uh, uh, what is the main difference that you see? You see more numbers, more information, more data in an easier way to be read and used. So actually, uh, the final goal of this uh, tool is to provide information for the business. And this information is better uh, available to the user if we avoid a number of uh, unnecessary addition like the graphic, large fonts, logos uh, that uh, are not really useful. This is just an example that I will explore now in more detail. So the idea is that uh, I personally would prefer to use this dashboard rather than uh, the first one. When I click something, I clearly see all the changes. I, I can better appreciate uh, what is changing every time and every month uh, of my, on my store. So this is uh, the difference between the two. So let me go back to the slides now so that I can, uh, oh, wait a second, I, I lost my slide. Here we go, okay. And uh, let me go back to uh, the rules. And the, the rule that I want to explain you in detail, so we can go step by step in, okay, what we have to do for each of these rules. Okay, let's, uh, let's examine one that uh, uh, should be simple. So keep it simple. So what is this rule about? And uh, the foundation of the design is simplicity. And so the idea is that we want to simply uh, remove visual effects, border, grid lines, images. Uh, we don't want a black background. Usually a white or light background is much, much better. Think about this. The dashboard that has a white background can be printed. If you have a black background, how do you print the dashboard? Now, I'm one of the guys that uh, don't print anything. I, I will never print a dashboard in my life. Uh, I promise. But I know a lot of users, a lot of business users that want to print the dashboard for any reason. And uh, so actually, this is uh, something that you have to think about because if you print something that has a black background, the result is usually horrible. And finally, avoid using uh, too much uh, uh, typography, too many different fonts, bold, italic. Keep it simple, okay? So when you, want to use, when you want to emphasize something, you can use bold. It should be an exception. You can do this one, maybe two times in a dashboard. Zero is always a better number. So that's the idea. So let's go in detail. So okay, we have seen, we have quickly seen a dashboard that represents the data of a store. We have the store, we have sales. Uh, you know, it's the classical Comtoso. Uh, actually, it is, we call this a PBI store. Just to give a different name, we had to introduce some different concepts. But uh, the basic idea, we started from the information from the classical uh, sample database uh, Comtoso. So we, have, we sell goods, we sell uh, different products in different uh, countries. Uh, and actually, we wanted to create a dashboard for the store. And what are the unnecessary decoration in this, uh, uh, in this um, dashboard? First of all, we are wasting one third or at least 25% of the area for a picture. And the picture is also you know, uh, visible in the background where we have the white uh, uh, the white background, but in reality, in transparency, we see part of the picture, and this is distracting. This is this is something that uh, does not help in any way to read uh, the numbers. And because we wasted this amount of space, we had to use a smaller font for the for all the other information. Uh, look at the size of uh, the title. Why this size is so big? Uh, look at the um, at the comment, uh, the text on the, on the left, uh, established in 1972, is one of the largest chain of the hypermarkets in the US. Okay, if I have to do a presentation in a conference, I may want to create a slide like that. A dashboard for my managers, I have to remind them every day when this business started, maybe it's not necessary information. Look at the numbers that we have on the right. We have this uh, big uh, number, which is uh, maybe a good idea because these numbers are important. But uh, why we have to use a, a border around? Is it really necessary? Probably no. And what about uh, these uh, two numbers? The two numbers that you see in uh, the bar chart. 
You see in the bar chart, we have uh, two numbers. Let me see if I can highlight this. Oh, let me see. Oh, highlighter, this one. So you see here, this area here, these two numbers. Why we need uh, these uh, two numbers? Because actually, uh, it doesn't help us in understanding uh, the uh, overall trend. And it is really unreadable. If, we, if I really need to show the highest value for a chart, it's probably better to write uh, this number in a separate way. So sometimes, because it is uh, so crowded and, and so small, it is not helping in uh, reading information. So let me show you another, uh, another point, which is uh, what we obtain after we remove these pointless graphics. And as you see, now we have our data now our data is starting to breath. So we have, we have more available space. We, we can separate, we can use a larger form, we can separate each uh, visual. So we, have, we can put more data in our report. So by just removing unnecessary information, we created a more readable dashboard. And actually it is not uh, ugly, it is not, I mean, at the end of the day, if, with a clean design, you can obtain also a nice looking report. So, um, it's uh, not rocket science to to apply this rule, but actually uh, we can obtain good uh, good uh, results with these simple steps. And one by one, step by step, uh, we can improve the dashboard. So another inform another interesting point is that uh, you will notice that now we, in some way, because we have more space, now we group the few uh, charts. Uh, and we separated a few charts from other. I will not go in detail about the meaning of each element, but the idea is that uh, there are parts of this dashboard that are not related to other parts of the same dashboard. So we kept them uh, separated. And this uh, space here, here, so you see here, this area, this area, this is blank, blank, blank. It's not uh, just because we didn't have anything to show. We wanted to use space to create a separation. But instead of writing a line to separate things, we use the white background, clear space to, to keep things separated. It is actually better, usually better than uh, trying to use uh, other, other approaches to this. Sorry. So at this point, uh, we can take a look at uh, some other set of examples where uh, we have something that, uh, from a graphical point of view, could be, I would say, a catching. So you can actually, oh, it seems interesting, it seems nice, but actually there are, in terms of usability, the dashboards that I'm gonna show you uh, hide some, uh, some error that uh, are in the same area of the error that we want to correct, we want to fix with the keep it simple principle. And uh, for example, in this case, uh, what are the problems we have here? Actually, this looks uh, nice. I mean, from a graphical point of view, it seems an elegant dashboard. But what are the problems? The first uh, is that uh, the chart, uh, the chart that you see here, is not very easy to read. What does it mean? Let me highlight this. Uh, so this chart here, oh, the, the, the yellow is not visible, so let me use uh, the, the, the laser pointer. This chart here, if you see this, this chart is not very visible. and uh, I mean, it's not cannot be understood understood very well because uh, we have areas that are overlapped, and because of the transparency, we are not hiding every, anything. But actually, what's the meaning of this? Why we have an area and not just a line chart? What is this point? It is very hard to understand uh, what are the colors and what are the metrics that we are displaying. Moreover, the choice of the colors has been a very bad one. Think about this. Uh, we have the purple color here for this brand. Then the same purple color is used here for the new customers. But the same purple color is used here for Wednesday and Saturday. Now, if I see the same color, I imagine that there is a relationship. Same color, same metric, or I mean, it should be something related. It seems that uh, this brand is, used, is sold only on Wednesday and Saturday, or this is the, the percentage of the brand. No, no, this is the customer, so it's something else. So it's, uh, the, the, the choice of the color is a, is a bad one. So maybe that the color choices are consistent for aesthetic, but are completely inconsistent for the dashboard, for the 
the, the message that we want to convey with the, with the dashboard. So two mistakes, color choice, overlapping area in the chart. In this slide, uh, again, we have uh, something that uh, from a graphical point of view, you see, oh, it's an elegant dashboard. But uh, what are the problems here? Um, I have that. What is this chart? Because we filled uh, this area of the color, is this a stacked area chart or not? Well, if I look at the numbers here, I would say no, because if the color uh, is credit sales, channel sales, uh, and direct sales, as I see also from the categories here, um, if I do the math, uh, I would say that uh, the number that I see here is not the sum of the other two or, or not. I mean, it's ambiguous. I cannot uh, realize what I'm looking at. And uh, the other problem is that uh, here, in the gauges that we have, we don't have a reference. When you see a percentage, you need to know a percentage of what? 80% of what? So 80%, 64%, certainly because the total is not 100, these numbers cannot be cumulated. So there should be something that uh, is, uh, um, a, you know, we have uh, a number, this number is a number, is a ratio against something else. Is it the total sales? Maybe, is not very clear. So it is something that uh, should be better described in the dashboard. And as I said, maybe the legend sometime is a, is a good idea. In this example, we have a nice picture in the background. Uh, there's a bike, I think. Uh, problem is that uh, we are not adding any value, and actually, it could be distracting to see this road uh, and this, uh, uh, you know, sunset, uh, uh, nice, uh, nice sky. But actually, it's too dark to be really seen, and it, it is not adding any value. And of course, here we have the problem of hiding information. In this case, we are hiding, okay, there is a small transparency here, but we don't see what is happening under this area and this area. Where is the red one, for example? Moreover, we have here numbers that are really not readable. Why we don't use the thousand separator? Or maybe we shorted the number using millions or, or 100,000, for example. So also in this case, we have uh, some problem uh, and last but not least, uh, what's the meaning of these colors? I don't see what is the meaning of the color. And by the way, this color changes over time to this other color. So I don't understand whether there is a relationship between this color, uh, azure, green, and maybe red, and the colors that I see here. Also because this yellow or amber one is not displayed any, anywhere else. So I don't actually have any clue about what I'm looking at in this report. The last example that I show you is about a, a much better report. Actually, in this case, uh, we have a fewer number of errors because uh, this dashboard is easier to read, has a light background, but still has some unnecessary decoration. But I would say that we have a, a much lower number of issues in this dashboard compared to the previous one. Um, in this case, we have uh, some issue in comparing the numbers provided in the tables and in the gauges. I would say that this is not very clear. How can I read this? Uh, yes, I have the legend here, but actually there will be a better visualization here. So it's not a problem of the rule number three. Probably this is also involving the rule number 15. Um, and uh, we can improve this dashboard. We can actually provide uh, more details uh, about the uh, visit reach frequency. We could add a trend. We could add a line of the trend over time for this data. But as I said, better can be improved, uh, but actually something much better than we, what we have seen so far. So one of the rule uh, that I mentioned is uh, try to avoid the dark background. And just as a test, we tried to apply the dark background to our dashboard once we applied the, the improvements that I described. And this is the result. Now, if you look at this, it uh, doesn't look so bad unless you have to print it. But if you look at the two dashboards, the black and the white one side by side, what is your preference? And uh, from many point of views, I, I, I still prefer the white background. 
So the white background makes it easier to print and it is much easier to avoid a number of uh, uh, trade-offs that you have to make once you start using a, a, a black background because usually most of the visual are also not designed to be displayed with a, with a, with a black background. Okay? So just to recap, what we have seen in this rule is that a good dashboard should be simple and easy to read. Uh, we have to um, try to remove unnecessary information so that we will have more space, a bigger area, and a bigger choice of uh, uh, charts for the most important information. And the dark background that I know many people like it, but actually sometimes is not the best choice. So. Uh, at this point, I will spend uh, some time talking about uh, uh, the chart reference. As I said, that we spent time uh, um, trying to classify the visual that we have uh, in uh, Power BI. Even if, uh, as you will see, uh, this uh, classification can be applied uh, to any other product. But of course, we, we went in detail for Power BI in particular, but most of the of most of the visuals are available also in other, in other products. And the idea is that we wanted to make it easier to make a decision about uh, what is uh, the right chart I have to use uh, for uh, a particular metric. So we started creating a, a number of uh, uh, categories that we can use to group the visuals. So these are the eight categories that we define. So we have a comparison, change over time, part to whole, flow, ranking, spatial distribution, and correlation. And uh, yes, I know we may have had probably other two or three or four categories, but actually having too many categories brings you in the problem of, okay, what is the right category? So actually, when you have to display something, it is usually easy to recognize what you want to do in this uh, list of categories. Usually you have uh, maybe one or maybe two. Sometimes you, have, you may have the, the, the data about two categories because you may want to do two things together. At that point, consider creating two charts, one for each category. Even if, as we will see, there could be uh, visuals that belong to different categories at the same time. But usually we try to classify each, uh, each visual preferably into a single one. So once we know, okay, I, I have uh, my data, I have my measures, my metrics, uh, my information, I want to show, I want to compare the current, uh, the sales for the current year with the, with the, with the budget, uh, maybe with the previous year. I want to see the trend over time. I want to see uh, how much percentage of each product category we are selling. Uh, compared to the entire volume. So it's relatively easy to identify the category. So this is the first step. The second step is, okay, I know that I have to pick a chart, a visualization for this particular category. What are my choices? At this point, uh, you go here, and we created uh, this uh, uh, visual reference. Uh, this is a PDF version. I, I, I want to show you this because it's very, very nice. This is a PDF, very high resolution, completely vector format. You can zoom in, zoom out, and uh, you can print it in a very good quality if you want. Keep this uh, PDF updated over time. You see that this is updated uh, for the May 2017. And uh, you can download this uh, for free. So actually, if you go to this URL, Marco, uh, Marco, you can, Marco, my yeah. friend. I'll give you 10 yeah, guesses oh. as to what happened just now, oh. but the first nine don't count. Okay. And we need to reshare uh, your screen. Okay, wait a second. Um, no worries. And while we're doing that, um, I actually, yep. I can see it. I, so we just got it back. Um, since I've already interrupted you, I'm going to ask a, one of the questions. I think it was actually... Yes, yes, um, thanks. So Benjamin Diamond, I already know the answer, but we're going to actually get it on the audio track. It says, are all the examples done in Power BI? It looks like you've got some from other tools. And I already know the answer, but I want to get it in the audio track. No, yes, uh, I, I explained. Um, in the bad examples, we used the examples that we found on the internet, and certainly these uh, examples have been created with other tools. 
but uh, the uh, examples that uh, we show for uh, applying uh, the rules are all in Power BI. So especially the dashboard uh, that you can see in the first and after the cure, after the applying the rules, uh, these are Power BI. And in fact, uh, I can show you. Hopefully, we will not. Uh, we will. This will not consume too much uh, uh, bandwidth. This dashboard is a Power BI dashboard. And uh, one second, this. Uh, the final dashboard is also a Power BI dashboard, and it actually, you can click on uh, one month, and you see that these are real. I mean, it is working. This is not uh, a fake one. Then, of course, in order to show bad examples, I, we didn't use uh, Power BI because uh, we found uh, real examples. I mean, these are the the all the dashboard that we have seen were examples or actually. Uh, real uh, dashboards that we found uh, on internet and and uh, they, they were pub public so we, we didn't uh, stall anything so we actually used something that was published in public websites and just to show what could have been an example of a mistake that you may do uh, even when you do um, a good uh, looking dashboard that actually has some problem in uh, I mean it could be improved I'm not saying it's completely wrong but just could be improved do you have what, time for one more, or do you want to keep going? Okay. Um, um, up to you. Uh, yes, well, well, just one second, one second so we can uh, open the Q&A. I, okay. I, I almost finished. Uh, what I wanted to say is that uh, once I am in this uh, visual reference that I have as a PDF, you can download the PDF from this URL. And let me show you, because in this page, actually, we have a number of things. So if you go to the, uh, if you follow the URL, you will land in this page, and if you scroll down, just before the list of the videos, and most many of them are also available for free, but this uh, link enables you to download the PDF. Uh, so you see the position here, you scroll down, when you, uh, just before course curriculum, you have this, uh, uh, this link and you can download, okay? So once you download this uh, PDF, what you can do, you can quickly figure out uh, the choices that you have for each kind of, uh, uh, category um, and uh, for each visual we provided a further classification we have uh, with the yellow background uh, the preferred choice with a white background uh, something that is okay good but uh, not uh, the, the the favorite choice and in gray background what we do not recommend to use and of course, there is an explanation for all, for, for each of them, but uh, <laughs> I will I will spend uh, hours to do that. Uh, but the, I think this is even just uh, getting this and maybe discuss or uh, figure out uh, why this is better than other. It could be something that helps you making the right choice. So uh, let me see if I have. Uh, okay, so I think that we can uh, we can uh, we can open with the Q and A because I don't have anything else to show at the moment. I mean, there, there is the course online, but uh, this will take, uh, I mean, we have six hours of videos uh, in the course, so it will take a long, a long time. So Charles, go on. Okay, so Zap is asking, um, he, he often runs into the problem, and I actually run into this problem as, as well, is that his dashboards start getting so much information that they actually start getting hard to follow. At what point, yeah. do you have any guidance at what point to start breaking it up into two separate dashboards? And Zap, I apologize oh, if I'm not paraphrasing. No, no. Yes, this, right. is a, this is a very good question. This is a very good question. And uh, the idea is the following. Uh, first, uh, um, actually in the course we show that the initial dashboard uh, that I've shown you, in reality has uh, data from three different departments of the company. So at that point, uh, the first, if you have too many things, and you want to split down, the first thing is that a, a dashboard should be for one area of the company. Now, it is true that uh, the CEO of the company want to see everything. At the same time, when you want to see everything, you, it doesn't mean that you want to see everything at, the, at any level. You want to see everything at the top level. So when you go at a very high level, you, you are at 10,000 feet, you want to display a few metrics. Then if you drill down, and of course, at that point you have another dashboard, but imagine one is the CEO dashboard, then the CFO has another one. And in the CFO, we provide more information 
And remember, the dashboard is always a first approach. Then you always have uh, reports behind. If you want to go in detail, you want to see the list of uh, 10,000 customer and the sales for each customer and the revenues of each customer, that's a report. But the dashboard could show you the top 10 customers or it could show you the amount, the cash flow, the trend, the, the trend of the credits, uh, the, the forecast of the, the cash flow. So these are the information for the CFO and of the 2030 metrics that could be interesting for the CFO, the CEO may be interested in four or five because in the same dashboard, he needs other four or five uh, metrics from other areas of the company. So yes, yeah, so sometimes you have to split the dashboard, true. And the criteria is that the first, uh, you have to realize what is the level of detail that you need. The higher the, I mean, the, the more, uh, you know, the more aggregated is the data, the more high level is the data, the more you can include data from different parts of the company because probably who want to see the dashboard uh, want to, to get a very, very broad overview. The more you go deeper, the more you go in a single department of the company, the more you can go in, in detail, which doesn't mean that you have to provide a list, uh, but you can provide more metrics about that department. Sounds okay. good. Yep, yep. Um, Philip, um, my friend from the Focus Conference, I'm not positive he's asking, but may, may see if you, you can actually make sense of it. Um, and actually, um, you, you and him know each other. Um, has anyone ever suggested using a dynamic dependent validation list to choose a visualization? I think he's talking about yeah. that report I think and this, the, the data this storage is a, no, Yeah, I think that this is a, a good, uh, I mean, it depends on, uh, you, you mean, uh, uh, I'm, I'm reading the, the question now. Um, I, I will say this, okay, let, let me see if I interpret the question. In Power BI, there could be some wizard that helps you choose in the visual, true. Okay, but this is a good uh, suggestion for the features of a Power BI. If you mean in the dashboard, the user should be able to change dynamically the, 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 the visualization, I don't think it's a good idea. I mean, the user of a dashboard should consume the dashboard. If you think about an user that interacts with the dashboard, I mean, one thing is choosing one month, and one thing is going using the dashboard for doing advanced analytics. If you, I mean, with Power BI, you can do many things. We're not saying that Power BI is here only to design dashboards. The dashboard is one of the outcomes of a Power BI report. Power BI report, you may have different goals. If the goal is to design a dashboard that many people would see every day, click there, take an over, over I mean, take the big picture of the company and so on. Um, th that is one approach. Another approach is you have a, a PBIX file with 20 pages and each page has a number of slicer and uh, a single big pivot table, two charts, a number of slicers because it is in reality a dynamic report. That's fine. Just don't call it, this is not a dashboard, but it, it's a, an, a, a tool for doing uh, analytics, for doing uh, uh, investigation over your data. That's completely fine. It is just a different goal. We have to, to figure out what is the goal. If the goal is a dashboard, the dashboard has a certain role and uh, has certain rules. From the dashboard, you can jump to a report, which is a detailed report where you explore the data when you navigate into the data. But usually, the ratio of users between a dashboard and a report is 10 to one or 100 to one. Because for 10 users that look at the dashboard, you have one user that say, oh, I want to see this number in more detail. And he starts to drill down in data, to analyze, to explore data, to see, oh, who is the customer who's contributing for 80% of the revenues this month? So this is another thing, it's not the dashboard. That makes perfect sense. I hope I yeah, yeah, no, it makes perfect sense. Um, Michael Schaber, I don't know if he watched my presentation or he's, he's also an advocate of some of the design patterns I use, asks, the clean dashboard looks nice, but the visuals are not separated as much as he'd like. Isn't it better to put a slight background in the visuals and use that background for separation? And this is something I actually do all the time. So what are your thoughts on backgrounds? <laughs> uh, I, 
Okay, I understand uh, that uh, uh, sometimes the, the. I mean, let let me do let me do a quick uh, background. The reason why we created custom visuals, I mean, a number of them, is because we needed them for this course. Uh, for example, the bullet chart is a custom visual that uh, solves certain visualization that uh, the, the default uh, visualization that you have in Power BI weren't able to solve. At the point that, and I understand what is your point, you say, if I'm not able to obtain with the properties of the visual, the kind of separation that I want, or the kind of visualization that I want, I could use the background as a way to obtain that feature. I completely understand that. Okay, and <laughs> what can I say? I, I, actually, I will not use that as a separation, but as a way to create a, a reference that you will not obtain in the chart, it could be a good idea. But we are doing that because uh, of, uh, of a current limitation of the product. I mean, it is a workaround. It's not the way to go. I mean, if you really need to use it, why not? What I'm saying is that uh, it shouldn't be considered the, the, the way we design the dashboard. Actually, we design the dashboard. When we have to design certain dashboard, we use another tool, like, for example, a completely graphical tool to design the dashboard as a, as a you know, um, as, a, as a very, uh, to get the, the layout, uh, we, we, I mean, Daniele, who, who do this, uh, he creates a, a design, a completely artifact that is not a real dashboard, it's just a design. And starting from that design, we try to understand how close we can go to that design using Power BI. And of course, I understand that sometimes you have to do some trade-off. But again, I hope that in one or two years, we, the need for doing these workarounds will be much smaller than that. So my point of view, I will not start designing a background that I will use to put the dashboard on top of it. Also because my experience is that once uh, you have a, a new version of Power BI, sometimes you have small changes that uh, completely destroy your alignment to the background. We have seen this happening, so I don't want to go there. I don't want to spend time to align of a few pixels every visual every time we have a new version of Power BI just because they changed some you know, CSS and now there is a difference of two pixels in this case. I, I don't want to lose time for this. All right, that makes okay. sense. Um, I, 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 you have to actually, if you get time, you have to watch my webinar because I actually cheat quite a bit and avoid a lot of those yep. pitfalls. Um, <laughs> so a, a couple of the questions have been around uh, getting access to your slides. Um, so yeah. you have a link here. Um, are the slides in that PDF or what's the best way to actually? That's a good point. Uh, yeah. Let me think. Uh, can we add uh, some content uh, to this uh, page? Because I think that people will visit this page later. So the easiest way to, is to provide a link to this. I mean, otherwise someone has to watch 60 minutes to, to, to get the, the, the URL. So actually the easiest way, if, if we can add some uh, link or content in the comments here, yep. we would uh, find a way do, to What provide. I'll do is in the, in the description, I'll add this, this um, link itself. Okay, perfect. And, okay. and the, slides, the slides are at this link? Very good. So I will provide you the, the PDF with the slides uh, and uh, we will see where to store it and uh, we will uh, provide you a link uh, and uh, I mean just after the, 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 the session we will fix it, okay? Okay, sounds perfect. Perfect. And good. there's a couple more questions but I think what I'm going to do is we're going to give our, our viewers, we have 304 online, so thank you very yep. much for joining us. We're going to give them two minutes back and I'm going to give the, give it the microphone to you to go ahead and close. And Marco, really looking forward to okay. you seeing you next week. And thanks again for doing this webinar. I really do appreciate it. Yeah, thank you very, very much, Charles, for this opportunity to present uh, uh, this training. Uh, as I said, we launched this course just yesterday. So we are very proud. It was, it was a very, very long, uh, long uh, uh, work. So this is the preview of the Power BI dashboard design course. Uh, you can see this uh, at uh, SQL BI, uh, slash dashboard. It's a short URL we created just for this. Uh, I hope you will enjoy. Remember, you can download uh, the PDF uh, and give us feedback. Uh, tell us uh, what you think about uh, our design principles. Uh, and thank you very, very much for attending. Thank you very much. And I'm going to go ahead and draw to a close. You guys have a great day. Thanks.